wonder if I could share it live too. Let's see. I don't know. I think we're live. Are we? It says live on Facebook on my end. It says it on my end too. All right. Well, then we are live. Good morning, Franz. Good morning, Alana. How are you? I am wonderful on this beautiful sunny day in early January, feeling fresh and ready for a new year. Yeah, that's awesome. So I know you because you are a trust and estates attorney, and I really want to thank you for coming on to my 10 a.m. Tuesday's Facebook live stream, which is starting today. Yes, day the first, one. Yes, the first Tuesday of January. And I want to thank uh, you for allowing it to start at 1020 to accommodate <laughs> my schedule. <laughs> yes, you're very welcome. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today, since I know this is something that you do, is I know that people talk about like real estate investing. And when you invest in real estate, they're like, protect your assets, protect your assets, make sure that people can't come after your assets. But nobody really says how to do that, right? Or what you need to do. So I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how real estate investors can protect their assets using trusts and the other types of things that you do. Sure. Yeah, you're right. You know, people kind of have this concept that if you're going to in invest in real estate, you want to be protecting that investment, but nobody really knows what that means, right? Or has any real concept of, of how to do that in a practical matter. So I would say, you know, there, it depends, first of all, what your goals are, and then also what your risks are. So as a basic matter, I would say for sure, one thing that everybody who invests in real estate, whether it's their primary residence or investment property, um, the simplest thing you can do to protect that property is to have it owned either in a revocable living trust or in an entity that is ultimately owned by a revocable living trust. Um, okay. That sounds like a lot of scary words, revocable living trust. But yes, it's actually quite it does. simple and it's not that hard to do. And by virtue of ensuring that your real estate is owned in this type of pretty simple trust to create, um, you make sure, you ensure that in the event of your incapacity or in the event of your death, that real estate is not going to get tied up in a 12 to 18 month, very expensive, very drawn out, very um, administratively headache type long court process called probate or the probate court. And um, that way, you know, you keep your assets private and keep them out of court. You ensure that they would be able to be available for and pass on to the people that you love, your heirs, your children, whoever it is, in the event of your death. And if you are incapacitated, if somebody needs to manage those investments on your behalf, they don't have to go to court to get the right to do that. Just by virtue of doing a little pre-planning and owning your, your investments in a trust, you're going to completely bypass the court system and keep your affairs private no matter what. So that's number one. I would awesome. say, yeah, and so that that and that's a basic level. And you know, not only is that going to keep your affairs private, keep them out of court, it's also going to ultimately save your family money um, because probate is very expensive. And so uh, we're all going to die someday. And when when we do, something has to happen with our stuff. And that can either be um, a long, uh, expensive, difficult process for you know to determine what happens with our stuff, or it could be a much simpler process in the privacy of an attorney's office. So uh, it protects your investment in that way because you're protecting it from the future costs of your heirs having to deal with that property in the event of your death or your incapacity. Yeah. When you say it's really expensive, do you have a sense of, can you actually like put that into numbers? I absolutely can. <laughs> so the, the cost of an, um, an average probate in California is 5% of the gross estate. Um, and that's the growth value of your real estate. So you can imagine, and, and everything else as well, but let's assume all you own is real estate. So if your real estate investments were really only worth a million dollars, which isn't not really that much money here in California, if you own one home and one, one property, one investment property, you're going to definitely be over that amount. Yeah. 5% uh, of a million dollars is $50,000. So, and that doesn't matter if there's, if it's encumbered, if there's loans on those properties, that's the amount that the, uh, that's the average cost because it's based on statutory set fees 
that uh, a lot of that mm. is, is legal fees, but there's other things that are built into that as well to, to come up to that average. So $50,000 essentially, you know, when it's all said and done, just to get that $1 million investment to your family, to the people that you love. And that can really oh, okay. be avoided. Mm -hmm. That entire cost can be avoided through some pre-planning. Okay. And I guess, so it's $50,000 to go through probate. And like, what does it cost to like, get a trust? I'm assuming it's less than $50,000. Yeah, another great <laughs> question. So um, I never, I, I don't say, oh, well, a trust, uh, you want a trust, it costs, you know, $3,000. Because um, that would mean that I'm just a document drafter. And I don't take a look at somebody's unique personal situation and be able to advise them on exactly what their options are. And then they tell me what they want. Um, so I, I always tell people, if you call up somebody and you ask how much a trust costs and they can tell you the exact amount, you probably <laughs> shouldn't work with them because that means that they're just using a one size fits all approach for everybody. You know, they have their standard thing that they put in place for everybody. Don't really, doesn't really matter what your unique situation is and that's how much it costs. That said, mm. um, I will say that it, it, for generally speaking, the market in the market, I think it's anywhere between um, $3,000 on the low end. And if you have very complex situation with a lot of assets and you know you have to fund the trust with a lot of different types of investments, it could be $8,000 and up on the high end. Um, but even on the high end, you can imagine that's much, much more affordable for, from your estate then you know, fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars would be on in a very basic probate matter, actually, because that would essentially be one mm. primary home and and a little bit, you know, of other assets. So, assuming you actually have a substantial real estate portfolio, it would be significantly <laughs> higher. Significantly yeah. higher. In fact, um, I just saw. So Prince, you know Prince. Everybody knows Prince. Um, yeah. Yes, sadly, Prince died, you know, no estate planning. He didn't, I, I don't think he assumed he was going to die um, in his 50s, sadly. And his estate has been in a very complicated probate for, you know, several years now. Um, his estate is valued at, I think, something like 200 or 300 million dollars, a lot mm -hmm. of money. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, his heirs, his siblings are his heirs, are anxiously awaiting for this probate matter to close. There's been all kinds of disputes about it. The IRS mm -hmm. now, I saw the newest thing is they're disputing the total value of his estate for the taxes that need to be paid. Um, mm. So the only people that are really actually happy about uh, Prince's uh, <laughs> estate administration are the lawyers who at this point have now been paid tens of millions of dollars to <laughs> battle it out in this probate, uh, probate matter. So um, probate, very expensive, uh, very avoidable. And it's the default system for people who, who don't plan ahead. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it sounds like a trust is a great way of protecting your assets for your children or heirs. Um, I think one of the things that I sometimes tell my, my real estate clients when they're like, oh, I don't know why I need a trust. I'm like, think of the relative that you hate the most and imagine that they get all of your money. And that might be what happens if you go through probate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I, maybe, maybe not, depending on what type of relative, you know, how close they are and whether or not you have other relatives that would inherit first. But that's a good point. And I think the point <laughs> is that do you want it to be left to a court to decide what happens or do you want to take matters into your own hands? Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's just part of living a responsible life um, it, it, since doing this work now, you know, for several years. I see that you know, there is such a difference for the family when somebody passes away between somebody having nothing done and the family having no idea what to do mm -hmm. and being totally confused and, and overwhelmed in addition to having to grieve the loss of a loved right. one and a family where the person or the, you know, the people have really thought things through, planned ahead, all decisions have been made, everything is organized and taken care of. And all they have to do is call up the lawyer who knows everything that needs to happen, have a meeting with the lawyer, and then they can decide whether or not they want to work with the lawyer or do it themselves. A lot of times the family can do it themselves from there because it's, it's so well laid out that they can. Mm. Yeah. That's and awesome. So it, yeah. So it's really a, it's a really big difference. It's an act of love for the people that you leave behind, really. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just like they don't have to battle out it, battle it out in court, whether they like or are happy with how you divvied everything up. It's clear that you divvied everything up that way. And then, you know, they don't have to grieve and figure out how to make everything happen. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> um, and so I, that sounds like a good way of protecting your assets after death. And I know that you talk a lot also about land trust as a way of protecting your assets while you're alive. So what exactly is a land trust? How does it work? Why might people want to get a land trust? Yeah, so um, I, I wouldn't say I talk a lot about them, but I definitely, you know, it's a, it's a niche area of practice. It's not for everybody. Um, I would say that many people who are sort of savvy in the real estate investment world have heard about this concept of a land trust because it's mm -hmm. talked about in the real estate investment world. Um, more real estate investors know about them than lawyers, to be honest, at least in California, because they're not all that commonly used for whatever reason. Mm. They have a very specific purpose. And what they do is if they're used correctly, they can keep the fact that you own an asset, that you own a property private from the public. Mm. Um, so they don't provide any liability protection. That's a, a misconception. If somebody mm -hmm. finds out you own that property, they find out that you're the beneficiary, and there's certainly ways to do so. It's not foolproof. Um, you'll still be liable. There's no protection for claims against you just by virtue of putting your property in a land trust. But mm -hmm. it's one part of a asset protection strategy because somebody who, you know, let's say you're, you, you're driving your car and you accidentally hit somebody, you know, on a bicycle and they sue you and you don't have enough insurance to pay their claim. And, you know, they're, they're suing you and they want to know whether or not you have other assets, if you have deep pockets to, to, to satisfy a judgment against you, if they pursue it further. And if they do a quick public record search and you own all these properties, the lawyer uh, for, that, for that person is going to be seeing dollar signs. Um, right. and, and, but if nothing comes up and on paper, you look like, you know, you don't have anything, they might think twice about pursuing it or they might settle it for an amount that maybe they wouldn't accept before because they're not going to think that you have all these assets available that they can just attach you know, uh, a judgment to and, and make sure that they'll get paid. So it's one part of a strategy. It's a very unique type of trust. Like I said, don't, not that many attorneys do them, um, but they're, it's essentially a living trust, a revocable living trust, just like the other type I was talking about, but mm -hmm. with some unique characteristics that make it so that your identity is private. So it's part of a strategy. It is also an estate planning strategy because by virtue of using this type of trust, you'll also keep those properties out of probate. So that's an added mm. bonus, but it, it, it adds the element of privacy. So those are mm. the, you know, staying out of court, privacy. And then the third, the third thing uh, for like the complete trifecta is considering whether or not you want to use LLCs as a strategy to own real estate investment. Mm. Now, oftentimes, and, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, can you talk about some of the benefits of, of owning property in an LLC versus a trust or just in yeah. your own name? Yes. And in fact, you can combine the two. So you can own a property in an LLC that is owned by a trust. And now mm -hmm. you've covered everything. Uh, and, and that really is the complete strategy, but it <laughs> depends on your risk tolerance and whether or not you want to go that far because there's costs associated with that. If you have right. a land trust, there's going to be annual costs associated with um, having a nominee trustee, service trustee of that trust. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a LLC, there's annual fees, especially if you're in California, it's very expensive. It's $800 a year. And um, you don't have anonymity in California. If you have an LLC and you own that LLC outright, you don't own it in a land trust. So that's another thing to consider. If you're just going with the LLC strategy, that's fine, but you don't, you're not gonna have anonymity, but you will at least have the protections of an LLC. So mm. what an LLC does is, as I think you know, is it creates a bubble, a shield around that one property. So everything that happens in that property or with respect to that property is in that bubble. And if your tenant sues you, for example, or if it's commercial property, you know, and somebody gets injured or whatever it is, and they mm -hmm. sue you as the owner of that property, the property is at risk, but everything else that you own is not at risk. So it keeps things in the bubble. Now, one thing that it doesn't do, in California at least, that a lot of people are 
kind of, uh, they think it does and they're pretty bummed when they find out that it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't protect the property in the LLC from you. So what I mean by that is if you personally in your personal life have a claim against you, something happens, uh, you, that person, your creditor can actually come after stuff even if it's owned in an LLC. Mm. Um, in other states, that's not the case. It, we have something called charging, there's charging order protection. And what that means is that in other states that have this protection, you, the, per, your creditor can sue you and they can get a charging order against you, meaning anything that that LLC pays you has to get paid over to them, but they mm -hmm. can't get to the underlying asset. They can't take your property away from you if it's in that LLC. So if you mm. own property in another state, especially one that has charging order protection, it's really a great idea to own it in an LLC. California, mm. we don't have that benefit, unfortunately. There is some complex planning that you can do to have layers and layers and layers of LLCs with the bottom ones being fr you know, from a state that does have charging order protection. And the question always is, how complex do you want your asset protection strategy to be? How costly? balanced against your risk tolerance. So, you know, if you're not that concerned, if you're not in a very high risk profession and you don't have the need for really, really strong, you know, the top level asset protection, um, then maybe you're okay with just, you know, it's a, a, an LLC revocable living trust combo. Um, mm -hmm. if you have a very, you know, you're, you're very concerned over asset protection or you're in a high risk profession or any of the other reasons why you might want a higher level of asset protection, you're probably going to want to have complex structures that will involve um, maybe land trusts, you know, LLCs owned by LLCs, and you may even be doing irrevocable trust planning, which is a whole other animal, and mm -hmm. that involves the, the pretty much the best type of asset protection you can get. But the problem with that is um, it's irrevocable, which means can't be changed, which means you don't have control over it anymore. So you mm -hmm. have to balance control versus asset protection. And that's it. That's sort of the, the various ways. I would say the average real estate investor is going to be fine with an LLC and revocable trust strategy combined. Awesome. Well, that was a lot of really great information. I definitely learned a lot of different things about LLCs and charging order protections, which I was actually not uh, aware of. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I wasn't actually. Every day. Yeah, I do. Um, we all do. We all do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I really want to want to thank you for that. Um, so if people want to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Uh, great question. They can go to my website. It's consciouslegal.law, C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S, legal.law. And um, yeah, people always say go to .com and then they can't find it. So I'll say .law again. And I think I forgot to mention at the beginning here, but that is my law firm. I'm the founder of Conscious Legal and I do business and estate planning. So going to the website would be a good way to reach me. Um, I will say that um, right now my website is being revamped as of today, January 5th, 2020, 2021, geez. And so yeah. you won't be able to um, schedule a call through my website. That link is broken. So just okay. call me. <laughs> my phone number's on there pick up the phone, like an old fashioned phone call. And uh, I'd be happy to talk to you. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And as I may or may not have said at the beginning, my name is Franz Faro. I am a real estate broker. I'm also an attorney and I know lots of awesome people like Alana. So if you have any questions or you need really awesome resources, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook or um, my website, and I will be happy to put you in touch with knowledgeable, amazing people like Alana uh, to help you be protected and make awesome decisions in your life. So thank you for tuning in. And thank you, Alana, for joining me. Thanks for inviting me to your very first Facebook Live. This was fun. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.